In 67, I was first officer on the liner Kenya. And we were in London docks and had the television and watched Chichester come back, come up the Thames. And that started me thinking, what is left to do? And it occurred to me he'd left one thing, and that was to go non-stop. And it was from that moment I started thinking about it. And by January 68, I was going. It was just a question of, I was going to build a different boat. I was trying to get sponsorship to build a 56-footer. It would go faster. But I couldn't get the money. Um, I needed £2,000. Very simple steel structure. But I couldn't get the money, so I thought, well, I'm going, so I'll take the boat I've got. So, so Hayley came out of her mud berth in Benfleet, and I recommissioned her. Sail around the world without assistance, leaving Antarctica to starboard. I think that's lovely and simple. Um, and I think anything that's that, that simple is attractive. You know, once you start getting it too complicated, it loses its attraction. But the simplicity of that, it lies with the sailor now, doesn't it? It doesn't lie with some sailing bureaucrat somewhere saying, well, rule 51C says this. You say, no, no, go away. This is simple. This is just sail. Get in your boat and sail. Perfect. Well, it was a different world. I mean, first of all, uh, there was not so much yachting. And also, you've got to realise, too, that boats on the whole were smaller then. And then people look at Suheli now and say she's small. Well, she was pretty average size at that time. Uh, but it was a different world. I mean, you, you go down to Falmouth, there's no marinas or anything, there's a few moorings, and that was it. And now, of course, there's marinas everywhere. But they didn't exist then. But I think the biggest difference, actually, is satellites. There weren't any. So we didn't have GPS, we didn't have any communication. Things went wrong, tough, you can't tell anyone. No, you're screaming for help, because you can't. Um, you can get on your single sideband radio if it's working, and mine didn't after two and a half months. Uh, and you might get heard and say, I'm in trouble here, but you've got to get through. And that was the big problem always, was getting through. The toughest thing with any voyage like this is making the decision to go. Because when you think about it and think what's involved, there's lots of reasons why you shouldn't do it. Lots of obstacles. You think, well, can I get over that? Can I get round it? Once you've made your mind up to do it, actually half the problems disappear. You say, right, I'm going. That's it. Well, actually, that no longer matters. That only mattered when I was thinking about it. Now I'm thinking about going. That makes no difference to me. I'm going. So what do I have to deal with now? The practical things about getting my boat ready to go sailing. Lovely. That's simple. Yacht clubs and bars are full of people who tell you what they're going to do. Television loves interviewing them. They say, actually, go and do it. And then let's hear from you. But those are the people who, the following year, they're still there making excuses. And the following year, they're still making excuses. They haven't got over that hump of saying, I'm actually going. And once you've made your mind up about that, you're off. You know, nothing's getting in your way. But you have to accept that there are going to be costs um, Lost my job. Um, I had 12, 13 years seniority, threw it out. Um, I'm going. Will I succeed? Don't know. Will I come back? Don't know. Um, all we knew at that point was that Chichester had got as far as Australia but needed a major refit. Could a boat go the whole way? Could a human go the whole way? Well, plenty of people said you could, it won't. I mean, I can remember I had the boat out at Suters at Cowes to fit a piece to take my self steering. And this chap came up in his blazer and everything and said, uh, you this Johnny who's going to go and sail single-handed non-stop around the world. And I said, well, I'm going to try and do it. He said, well, it can't be done in any case you couldn't do it. I've never met him. What a stupid remark. And I said, you know, are you a school teacher? 
He said, no, 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 I'm not. Why? I said, because you'd be bloody depressing for your students. You can't say, I said, just effing have, get off. You know, you don't know me, what a stupid, but he's one of those people, you see, who doesn't want you to succeed, because he'll never do it. So he doesn't want any other reason to feel worse about himself. Now there's a lot of those people around. I think you just have to ignore them. You just say, I am going, I hope I can do this. I've got a boat I know inside out. I've sailed it a long way, 20,000 odd miles by the time I set off on this voyage. The two most experienced sailors were myself and Matessier, if you look at it. But the media didn't get me, didn't realize the experience I got. And the fact I'm a master mariner, you know, navigation, that's what I do for breakfast. Uh, so an awful lot of the stuff you did that needed to keep the boat going, you'd done as an apprentice in the Merchant Navy. So I had some considerable advantages compared with a lot of people, but it wasn't appreciated, except by the editor of Yachting World, who said, watch Knox Johnston. He's the dark horse, but he was ex-Merchant Navy. He knew how well trained we were. So it was quite interesting, but from a personal point of view, once I decided to go, that was it. I was going, and I was looking for sponsorship, couldn't get it, but I'm going, and that's it. And uh, so I just started preparing. Now, the Sunday Times announced I was in their race on the 17th of March, 68. Happened to be my 29th birthday. I was in the Navy at the time. And I was never actually asked about it, they just announced I was in it. I never actually entered. I don't think any, the four of us were announced at that time were going to do it. Um, I don't think any of us were. Uh, I never filled in an entry form. It wasn't such a thing. Uh, because someone said to me afterwards, were you sure you won? So well, they gave me the prize, so I suppose I did. Yeah. But I mean, by then, I'm just focused on the practicalities. You know, everything else is out of it. I am going. I'm going to try and leave on the 1st of June. And Sunday Times wanted us to go at the end of uh, October. And that was stupid, because you'd be going around Cape Horn at the wrong time of year. I, Che Blythe and John Ridgway all went early in June because we had small boats. We had to go then. And I don't think most people understood that. But that's what we did. I think what's interesting about this, this Golden Globe race that's going on at the moment is it's showing people that small boats are very vulnerable in the Southern Ocean. We've had, what, four or five dismastings now. And it's all down to being rolled. It's all down to boats not being comfortable with the seas. Now, I'm the last person to criticize anyone because they're not my boats and I don't know how they handle. And it's up to each individual to try and get that right. And I'm not in a position to advise. Um, we don't have the speed in these small boats. We can't outrun the waves, therefore we're gonna to have to deal with them. And what I think is gonna be fascinating at the end of this is to get all the people who were rolled and dismasted, let's get them to talk about that. Let's find out if there's a common factor, see if there's something we can learn from it. No one could have predicted we'd get this number of dismastings. I think that's the surprise to me, is the number of, of dismastings we've had. Um, we're lucky, actually, we've had no serious injuries, I think. Um, when Abedash is fine, he's got a chipped vertebrae, but that'll, that'll patch up. Um, but, then, you know, everyone's alive and, and well. But the significant thing is the number of boats that have dismasted. Now, why? Are we, is the rigging too light? The mast too light? You know, the general trend these days is to go for lightness. Forgetting actually boats have to put up with storms. You know, we're not sailing around the Solent and get away with lightness there. When you start crossing oceans, it's a different game. And you need a much stronger, more capable boat. That's why I feel we need to analyze what the causes are of, of these dismastings and see if we can find a solution to it. But in all cases, they've rolled. Now, 
That indicates they haven't managed to hold the boat comfortably to those big waves. That we need to address. We need to find out what the solution to that is. But it won't be one solution because all the boats are different. There can be different solutions to different boats. Now, Abidash, for instance, was beam on. I thought, ah, he hadn't got the warps out. If he had the warps out, he'd been stern too, he wouldn't have rolled. But will that work for a boat with a transom? I don't know. Did any of them try it? Let's find out. Did anyone try a sea anchor? That, that's what I would really like to know, and I, this is what I, I want to find out once the race is over. I don't think the rules are widely understood, and, and to be honest with you, I think I'd probably have allowed more communication. I think we've got it. We're 50 years on. We've got satellites. Uh, I think I'd have allowed more communication. Uh, I think trying to emulate what we had to go through 50 years ago is slightly unrealistic. Uh, as I said before the race started, you know, one of the biggest problems these guys are going to have is deprivation from things like their mobile phones, which are part of our lives these days. Whereas, of course, 50 years ago, I didn't have that to be deprived of. So it wasn't an issue. And frankly, most ships I was on, we got telegrams, we got anything. So communication was pretty poor. You didn't expect it. Well, nowadays, the modern sailor does expect it. So actually being deprived is a bigger problem for them, I think. But I think I'd have allowed them more communication. But um, otherwise, I, I can see what they were trying to do. And I think it's, it's proving interesting insofar as, as this number of dismounts things. We've got to crack that.